Okay, so today we'll be playing Hearts of Iron 4. Everything is normal, except one very key thing. Every infantry division has practically infinite defense and organization. It's completely weird, and it has kind of random effects at times. I don't really know what to think of it. I'm kind of concerned about what this may mean. I don't know if we'll be able to fight an offensive war, but we'll definitely try. And to make things just a little bit more spicy, we will play on Elite difficulty. I've never actually played on Elite difficulty before. For some reason, I've just forgot that this entire difficulty system exists in Hoi 4, so I just always play on regular. I've never played on anything other than regular. Iron Man mode, historical focuses, and we'll see what exactly happens when divisions all have infinite organization and defense. So let's go. So, as you can see, this infantry unit has, well, not infinite organization and defense, I guess, but like 820 org and like 198,000 defense. Defense isn't the most important stat in this game, but yeah, 800 org is pretty good. I don't really know how this will affect the game, especially elite difficulty too, because I've never actually played on elite difficulty before, so this should hopefully be a challenge, right? Because our divisions have infinite org too. Well, our infantry divisions and France's infantry divisions have infinite org, but we're the ones attacking, so... I don't know. I, I really don't know how this will affect the game. Oh wait, I forgot that Elite Difficulty makes things take forever to research. That's not ideal. Okay, and we'll send some volunteers to Nationalist Spain for two reasons. Of course, to get army experience and maybe get some traits, but also just to see what exactly um, happens with the infinite organization and defense in the Spanish Civil War. Like, what will happen? Will the war go on forever? Will it end? The AI is still doing stuff, at least. I was kind of worried that the AI would just refuse to ever attack. 69,549 defense. This is pretty dismal. Yeah, this makes it really easy to grind because we're just always winning the battle, we're always getting experience, but this division's never going to lose. It's such an interesting phenomenon. I also want to test out what's gonna happen over the Maginot because can we defend here with just one division on every tile? The AI isn't that good at attacking over the Maginot, but this is elite difficulty too, so France isn't as incompetent. Wow, we fought this one division for like a year and it's actually finally starting to break. Yeah, it just broke. Live right there for everybody. Well, technically this isn't live. Disclaimer, this isn't live. Yeah, wow, I'm surprised that that division actually broke. I'm going to try to keep grinding though for hill fighter and panzer leader. I got like 500 experience towards panzer leader and 230 experience towards hill fighter, trying to break that one hill tile for a year. Well, here's the deal. Once you run out of supply, it doesn't really matter how much org you have. Your divisions are just going to die. It's nice. <laughs> and we're on war economy too. Usually I would do the Angelos. Somehow I've been having problems with like deploying men. And I'm interested to see what happens here too with Japan having to fight a China that has divisions that have infinite organization and defense. Oh, hmm. This may end badly for Japan, I have a feeling. Nice, and Rommel can get Panzer Expert now. That's that's good. He's not doing so well in the d terrain traits, probably because I'm not doing the best job microing to get all that stuff. I, I think things are fine for, for now. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, Spain still won the Civil War, even with the crazy organization divisions, but I guess crazy organization division versus crazy organization division is kind of equal, maybe. It's kind of interesting to see what happens. How's Japan doing? Oh, this is kind of cool. I guess Japan's actually doing decent. I'm still scared about France, but I'll try my best. I've never played on Elite Difficulty 2, so that might also meme me. Hopefully this is hard, though. I don't want this to be, like, too easy. But now it's time to actually figure out what happens when France and Poland have infinite organization on their divisions. Because infinite organization doesn't mean the unit is invincible, it just means that you have to, um, that the unit won't retreat, ever, probably. And they have infinite defense, too, so it's kind of complicated. We gain a bonus against France and Britain, we'll declare the war. I'm just going to put some divisions over here to defend against any meme invasions. It doesn't look like they're attacking here, that's good. 
So we'll probably delete some of these just so we get some artillery back. Yeah, that's that's good. Let's see what happens. Oh no, it's starting to look like the Spanish Civil War. Even with Infinite Org, like I said, they're not invincible. It just makes this a lot more difficult. But then again, we're also extremely defensive, and Italy too. I don't even have to worry about Italy falling. And we have our medium threes now. Oh yeah, I didn't even call Italy into the war. Oh, but they're gonna be stupid and try to attack into infinitely powerful France. But yeah, these battles are just crazy. Like, the, those defense values are just insane. Even though defense is kind of the most useless stat in all of Hearts of Iron 4, our best thing to do will be to just snake through them so we don't have to worry about breaking the infinitely powerful divisions. This is a cavalry division too, so we'll, we'll be able to get through there. Oh, look at that, we actually broke this, so now all the UK and France's divisions will be lost in Poland. That's good, because Poland is going to be a lot easier to take out than the UK and France. What I'm really worried about is the Soviet Union, um, I don't really know what's gonna happen there. <laughs> Oh, the an infinite organization Soviet Union sounds terrible, but after I deal with the allies, um, I could probably make some legendary tanks that maybe can just destroy every division. I, I really don't know what to do. Oh, there we go, okay. Poland capitulated, but not too many allied divisions are still stuck here. But yeah, we didn't have to take Danzig, we just had to take everything besides Danzig, so... We will bring everything over here, except one army, just to clean up the rest of these divisions, because there are actually quite a bit of divisions still over here, and they're not gonna just break. Even without supply, they have so much org that it's still annoying. But we'll get ready to go around the Maginot, which is going to be a lot more difficult than um, regular Hearts of Iron 4, where you just instantly take out the Benelux and then just go into Paris. We could maybe still outmaneuver the allies, but now outmaneuvering the allies is actually going to be important because if we don't outmaneuver the allies, they're going to make a defensive line and then it's all over. So outmaneuvering the allies will be extremely important today. And the allies have such big air forces. It looks like they're using it on Italy mostly, and Italy's actually managed to break their lines. So the treaty must be obeyed. There we go. Okay, so everything is in the Benelux, except naval bombers are in the English Channel, and we have some fighters in Western Germany, actually, and I'll put some fighters in the English Channel, too. We could maybe sink some ships, even though we're not quite ready to do a sea lion just yet. Okay, it's time to go into the Netherlands. This is going to be kind of scary. My tank divisions still aren't amazing yet. This is probably the best battle I've been in with tanks so far, but let's maybe try to just battle plan a little bit. I really hate battle planning, but we kind of need to battle plan. Netherlands is capitulated, lots of French divisions encircled again. It's time for Belgium, and this is our one chance. France still has disjointed governments, so I think we still can take Paris and Calais and capitulate them, possibly. We're just gonna have to be extremely sneaky about this. It's too late, France is probably already bringing divisions over here, but okay. And Great Britain was trying to get into that port. Yeah, this is our chance. This is our only chance we'll have. If we can't do this now, then then all is lost. We still have an opening. If we can do this, we can capitulate France. If France makes a defensive line, this is gonna be just like Poland again. Oh wait, we got Paris? Really? Wait, we got Paris? Wow, that light tank moves really fast. Okay, we still have to take more than just Paris, but that was fun. That light tank, I forgot how fast light tanks move, <laughs> apparently. Will, the, will Calais capitulate them? No. But they're so close, I think we've actually done it. Round Maginot works again. Uh, even with elite difficulty and giving every division, well, every infantry division, infinite organization, France still lost. 
Ah, this is the longest it's ever taken me to capitulate France, and one of the other allies has to be a major. No? Ah, uh, Canada or the Raj is going to become a major, but still. I'll still at least try to see Lion, because there's nothing left in Africa. We can try to see Lion, otherwise we'll just prepare to defeat the Soviet Union, and I think if we beat the Soviet Union, that counts as a win, right? Right? Okay, we're memeing the British Navy, sinking pretty much everything. <laughs> okay, sea lion is gonna happen. This is going to be a difficult sea lion, though. The AI is a lot better in La Resistance. Great Britain will actually fortify their homeland. Probably, unless on elite difficulty they decide to be stupid. But we do have our chance, we have naval supremacy. Oh, and Britain decides not to defend their ports on elite difficulty because naval invasions aren't possible if people have divisions on ports and we don't have amazing marines because their divisions have infinite organization. So they just have to put one division on the port and then they're invincible. Wait, well, how are we breaking London? It's probably because they just spawned in all those divisions, yeah. But they still, they still have an army here, actually, which is better than past UK. But this is also La Resistance, better AI UK, Elite Difficulty UK, and Infinite Infantry Organization UK. So this is a lot of things right now. If we can take London, then what we can do is we can actually do more naval invasions. One to get to Liverpool, and then another to get to Edinburgh. Okay, because London is ours, even though they had infantry in there. Yugoslavia joins the Axis, that's nice. So we have Yugoslavia and Croatia, thank you, I guess. Okay, I think even if the UK holds on forever and Sea Lion just kind of stalemates like this, it's still a win for me because we can go after the Soviet Union and just sit like this and the Allies pretty much can't do anything, especially the AI. Then we don't even have to worry about D-Day. It's just kind of like we win against the Allies when this happens, kind of. Soviet Union's scary though because infantry divisions are their specialty, so they're gonna have a lot of infantry divisions with infinite org. I'm going to have to work on some amazing medium tanks. I should have made heavy tanks probably to actually just run over stuff, but it's time for naval invasion memes 2.0. Okay, and they're actually defending their ports. That's very bad. <laughs> because that makes them pretty much invincible, but we still possibly can break them, maybe. And we could maybe get to this other port too. Maybe they don't have anything in Newcastle. Yeah, they don't have anything in Newcastle, that's good. Oh no, they, they brought something in. Oh no, guys, I think doing this, I think this weird buff thing that I did has had an unintended side effect because my divisions are starting to, um, disappear. Like, these infantry divisions are kind of, um, winning battles in some places, but there used to be, um, two armies here, but one army of 24 divisions has ceased to exist. 24 divisions got overrun. I'm kind of in disbelief that an entire army just got overrun. That's not good. See, look, now he's only at 18 divisions. Whenever we start losing a battle, we instantly start just getting overrun. This is just actually bad. This organization is bad, because now instead of retreating, they just die. Okay, we're we're getting out of here with the tanks. Okay, well, um, it's time to have a more historical game for once. Except Denmark, Norway. There's no way that I'm going into Denmark and Norway. Since when did the Soviet Union become so aggressive? I've never seen the AI Soviet Union ever try to justify against Germany. We're justifying against them, so it doesn't matter. But still, like, when the AI is on Germany, I've never seen the Soviet Union actually decide to go to war. Okay, it's time to probably lose, but we'll at least see what happens. Well, it doesn't look like any divisions are getting overrun, at least, but it is a defensive war, unfortunately. Romania has a lot of divisions. Romania could make a move if they wanted to. Okay, Italy's getting bombed into nothingness, so I guess. We'll send some stuff over to help them out. Do you know what I've realized? I've realized that this is kind of terrible, honestly. <laughs> like, this entire organization thing, it just makes the game kind of 
unfun. Now I know why organization exists. I, I don't know if I want to continue this, but I'm out of time, so I kind of have to stop here, at least for now. So if you'd like more of this, remember to like and tell me and yell at me to actually make a part two or something. Or maybe even just try again from the start with a better strategy, because I've thought of a lot of things while this is going on that maybe could have made this easier, so maybe I can show that off. But anyways, see you guys next time. Thank you.